chronic disease is everywhere. We have medicine that works to control and sometimes reverse chronic disease. So why aren't people getting better? I've witnessed diabetes, hypertension, COPD, asthma, personally, professionally. Today I run a medical clinic that exclusively focuses on these things. My professional career and my doctoral degree both about behavior change. And so I'm not here today to tell you about any medical advice, but I want to share some perspectives that I had when I saw a study that showed 98% of patients with chronic disease getting their disease in control. Like, what does that mean for you? What does that mean for me? There are billions of people in the world with chronic disease. The World Health Organization says six of the top 10 killers, chronic conditions, Three out of five U.S. adults have one chronic disease. Two out of five have more than one. That price tag, $400 billion. Now, if you're counting, that's $12,500 every second of the year. Every single year. This is happening because patients are having a hard time taking small steps in avoiding really big problems. And those problems aren't measured in dollars, they're measured in amputations, blindness, hospitalizations, heart attacks, and early death. Patients aren't taking small steps that's causing big problems that are avoidable. My family's not immune. One of my kids, teenager at the time, routine physical, type 2 diabetes. Yeah, that was dad, devastated. How could I let that happen? Like my professional experience didn't help. Shame, guilt, disappointment with myself. My kiddo impacted, my family impacted. And I realized in that moment there are two types of people in the world. There are people that are impacted by chronic disease and there are people who will be, at some point in their life, impacted by chronic disease. This really fueled my mission. I wanted to deeply understand and then solve all of these problems, but I wanted to do it with existing medicine, existing know-how, existing technology. And what I've found, it's simple. It's just not easy. And here it is. Everyone needs a team of people, an expert plan, they need to be able to make small changes, and they need persistent reinforcement from their team. Now, there's a wide variety of professionals that have to get involved, pharmacists, navigators, patient educators, friends, family, dietitians. but the primary actors are the doctors, clinical social workers, and patients who are committed. Each one of these people has a different set of challenges they face during the, you know, the, this problem. And so let's start with the patient. Chronic disease can be confusing, stressful, expensive, time-consuming. It's really overwhelming. I talked to one patient being asked to take 18 medicines across five time windows every week. They just don't believe they can actually get things in control. Consider my mother-in-law. Flew home to see her with my wife, and we arrived. She has type 2 diabetes. Her blood sugar was very high. She ended up in the hospital. When we dug in to find out why, it was because she didn't know how to have her medications refilled. That small problem, medication refilled, hospital visit, big problem. That $30 medication turned into a $50,000 hospital visit, paid for by the taxpayers, Thank you, by the way, for helping with that bill. When she left the hospital, by the way, the doctors in the hospital did a great job. She left and had four more medicine problems in the next two weeks. This is not an individual endeavor. Chronic disease doesn't get solved alone. If we leave patients alone, they will continue to fail. Now, from the medical provider's point of view, the medicine works. Just take the medicine. But patients aren't just taking the medicine, and for a lot of good reasons. 
And the doctors aren't tra trained to handle behavior change. That's not their job, so they understandably watch in frustration as they prescribe the correct medicine, patients get worse, outcomes fail. It takes a team, not just a doctor. You remember my kiddo? The doctor gave the right medicine and said, in 90 days, come back and visit us again. And I knew that wouldn't be enough. It was definitely the right medicine, but I knew that wouldn't change. So we sat down and we talked about what it meant to have diabetes. We talked about all the things that could change. And my teenager wasn't willing to do all of that. And so we made a plan and we didn't follow the plan. So we had to change the plan. And we made small changes each and every week and we kept talking about it. In 90 days, my teenager reversed the chronic condition. Gone. It takes a team. Now, social workers... They do a lot. They understand the patient. They understand motivation. They can screen for mental health issues that get in the way of taking medicine. And they know that one leading indicator of success and behavior change is patient motivation. They know how to measure that. In medical clinics, we don't measure consistently patient motivation. It just doesn't make sense. It takes a team. No one person can do it alone. The social worker can't change the medicine. The doctor, not trained in, trained in behavior change, and the discipline of the patient just doesn't get us there. It takes the team to create a better quality of life, a longer life. In a sentence, the right team, the right approach leads to better outcomes. Let's talk about that pilot study. 50 patients, 49 of them got their disease in control in 12 weeks. 83% kept it in control for two years after that. They lowered their hemoglobin A1C from 9.6 to 6.4. That's a measure of your blood sugar over 90 days. Now, by comparison, if a medicine lowers your blood sugar by one point in 12 months, that's considered clinically effective. This study lowered blood sugar A1C by three points in 12 weeks. No hospitalizations, no complications from diabetes, and only one hypoglycemic event, that's when someone has blood sugar that's too low, in 14,000 doses of insulin administered. Now, this team has to go and do more research to scientifically validate their work, but I was inspired by that study. And so I wanted to find more. So I interviewed anybody who would talk to me, patients, doctors, social workers, people that work for insurance companies, anybody who was involved, support staff. I delved deeply into the scientific literature for social work, for medicine, for behavior change. I wanted to understand how to solve this problem. And here's where I stand. I propose a new prescription for chronic disease. It requires a medical provider, whether that's a doctor, nurse practitioner, or a physician's assistant, a clinical social worker, and a committed patient. And there are four steps they have to take together. First, we have to assess the patient, not just for the medicine. We have to look at the mental health conditions, the socioeconomics, and we should probably pay attention to the patient's lifestyle preferences too. If there's something they know they won't do, we shouldn't assign that to them. We know diet and exercise are critically important. We know people want to take their medicine. So we better figure out why they're not doing it and help them. Number two, we've got to create a plan that fits the patient's commitment. Small changes that build confidence in the team. Small changes that build confidence in the plan. Small changes that build confidence in the patient. We can't jump right to the end changes. We've got to help them move through them. Small changes. Number three, we need to make frequent changes to medicine. We can't wait 14 or 21 or 30 days to change someone's medicine that's not working. We've got to do it immediately. Help them have the physical energy. Help them have the emotional energy to get better, faster, days, not weeks. And the fourth thing, we need to give them a support. The support of professionals, the support of friends and family. They need reinforcement on a regular basis. Praise for doing well. Adjustments when it's not working. Occasionally, Gentle accountability. How does it all come together? In a 64-year-old woman, 
who had diabetes for 15 years uncontrolled and applied these concepts and in six weeks had her condition tamed. What did we do? We started by changing the medicine, which lowered the cost of her medicine, by the way. And then we checked in every single day. Did she take all the medicine she was supposed to take? Did she check her blood sugar? And when she didn't, we called and said, hey, how's it going? Are you okay? What's going on? She loved that the providers actually looked and let her know they were looking. It wasn't just fixing problems. It was giving positive feedback. The right team with an expert plan, small changes, and reinforcement. It's very simple. It's just not easy. So today, there's hope. Our healthcare system, it is improving. I, I know that people want it to improve faster, and I accept that. But we do have the pieces. We have multi-specialty care. We have integrated mental health care. We have remote monitoring. We have new medicines. We have medical devices. These things all exist. But I do acknowledge the puzzle is not put together yet. When it does come together for a patient, as I have seen in some individual cases, it is fantastic. This also happened in my home in 2010 when my mom came home from the hospital. She'd had a near-death experience with COPD. She was committed to making changes. She had a great medical team. She gathered a support team, and she started figuring out what would work for her. And it led to seven more great years of life, time that my family and her friends would never give back. And so my dream is to change the way we treat patients. I want to ensure that everyone has access to all the components that I've talked about today. That's what I'm committed to. What can you do? You can play your part. Whether it's your disease or someone you support, make sure that your team knows everything about the medicine, but also about the mental concerns you have about someone's well-being. Talk about the socioeconomics. That means the cost of the medicine and the lifestyle choices when you're in the room with a provider. Second, Ask for a plan you can believe in. Make sure it's cost effective. I had a doctor recently give me a drug that cost $300. I said to the pharmacist, is there something else that would work that was less expensive? They said, yes, this one costs $10. I said, what's the difference? They said, well, the $10 one you have to take twice a day, the $300 once. $10, please. Talk to your providers about changing the plan if your plan's not working. It's okay to ask for help and raise your hand. Many physicians and social workers have to see 20 or 30 or 40 patients a day. You have to advocate for yourself until you find the right, the right team. And that brings me to the number four thing you can do, which is create a team. The professionals, the family, you deserve a team to support you. A team that will give you praise a team that will absolutely help you make the right changes to your plan and give you gentle accountability when you need it. Remember, the medicine works if we do the work. Together, we can all make health care better, and it's up to us. I'm Dr. John Oberg. Thank you.